Welcome to our electron line. In our example this time, we don't all have just positive charges, we also have a negative charge, and we're going to try to find the force on Q3 due to the presence of the other two charges. Again, the best thing to do is to go ahead and start by drawing the vectors. Also notice that it sometimes helps to color code your charges. For example, make the positive charges red and the negative charges blue to make it easier to see what we're doing. So the force between, let's say, Q1 and Q3, since they're both positive, that will again be a force of repulsion, which means the force will be pointing in this direction. And that will be equal to F between 1 and 3, so we write 1 and 3, like this. Now the force between the second charge and Q3, well, that's a force of attraction. So Q3 will be pulled towards Q2, and so the force will be in this direction, and also notice that the force will be larger than this force because the two charges are closer together. So this will be the force between 2 and 3. Since we're going to have to add these forces together, we have to find the components of any of the force that's not pointing either in the x direction or in the y direction, such as F13, which means that we're going to have to find the component in the x direction, like this, so this here will be F13 in the x direction, and we're going to have to find a component in the y direction, F13 in the y direction. Notice that these distances are the same, so there's some symmetry there, which means that the angle here will be 45 degrees, which means that in this case, this will be equal to F13 times the cosine of 45 degrees in the x direction, and this here will be equal to negative, because it's pointing downward, the magnitude F13 times the sine of 45 degrees in the y direction. So those are the two components of F13. We need the components before we can add the vectors together. So next we're going to find the magnitudes of F13 and F23. Now, they will not be the same because notice this is a larger distance than here. So first let's go between uh, 1 and 3. The force between 1 and 3, the magnitude is equal to K times Q1, Q3, divided by the distance between them squared. So in this case, that's K, Q1, that's a Q, Q3 is Q, and the distance would be the square root of 2 times D, quantity squared. So this is equal to 1 half K, Q squared, divided by D squared. Now we find the magnitude of the force between charge 2 and charge 3. So the force between 2 and 3 is equal to K. Q2, Q3 divided by the distance squared. Now even though Q2 is a negative charge, we're simply going to find the magnitude of that force so we don't have to worry about the negative sign. So this becomes K, Q, Q divided by D squared or K, Q squared divided by D squared. Now we're ready to find the total force. We can now say that the force acting on 3, because we're trying to find the force on 3, this force right here, let's see here, that would be equal to, and by the way, what we can also do is we can vectorially or graphically add these two together. So notice that if I draw a parallel line from here, parallel to F13, and I draw a parallel line from here, parallel to F23, this here will be the total force on Q3. Uh, graphically, that becomes obvious. So that's the force we're looking for. But now when we do this mathematically here, we have the total force is equal to the vector sum of F13 plus F23, so this is equal to F13. Notice that it's now broken out into the X and Y components. So this would be equal to F13 times the cosine of 45 degrees. And that would be in the positive X direction. And minus F13 times the sine of 45 degrees. Not the cosine in this case, but the sine 
of 45 degrees in the y direction. Notice we have a negative here because it's pointing in a negative direction. And then we're going to say minus the magnitude f23 in the x direction. So we take the magnitude of that force times the direction x, but it's negative because it's pointing to the left. So now we can add the two x components, and we only have one y component, so we can add the two x components together. So the total force F is equal to F13 times the cosine of 45 degrees minus F23 in the x direction, and then minus F13 times the sine of 45 degrees, and that would be in the y direction. And then if you want to plug in the values for F13 and F23, you can do the following. So we have the force is equal to F13, it's right there, that's one half, times KQ squared over D squared, times the cosine of 45 degrees, which is 0 0.707, minus F23, which is right here, that would be K, oops, Let's see here, that would be K, oh, that's a Q, not a rho. So Q squared divided by D squared, all right? And that would be in the X direction, and then minus F13, so it would be the same magnitude, that would be one half, K Q squared divided by D squared times the sine of 45 degrees, 0 0.707, and that would be in the Y direction. So then notice, of course, that this here is the bigger quantity than that. You can simplify that, but I think we have the picture. There's the component in the x-direction. There's the component in the y-direction. And that's how we find forces on charges when they're situated not just on a straight line, but in the xy-plane.